All right, favorite students, here are some really challenging ones to really bend your brain a little bit. This is OS5, numbers three and four. Um, let's start with number three. So number three, we got this, we got that. Wow, that's a tough one. First of all, I'm gonna say one, two, three. We got four carbons here, plus another one over here is five. Over here I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Mm. So I'm going for five carbons here to eight over here. But notice this, this one is attached by an ether and if I pull this off, right, this would leave me with four carbons here. So maybe somehow two of these can make this. Okay, so let's keep that in the back of our mind. Let's also think about our good buddy, retrosynthesis. Over here I actually have a number of different functional groups. But what I notice is because my new molecule is bigger than my old one, that maybe this, this is two different molecules that came together and made uh, an, an ester. So maybe my last step is Fischer esterification. I'm gonna play with that idea for a minute. If my last step was Fischer esterification, then maybe before that I had this and that, right? So last step, my good buddy Fisher. If you look at those two molecules here and here, you might notice something about them, right? At first glance, they don't look identical, but if you trace them out, one, two, three, four carbons, with an acid on one side and an alcohol in the two position, they are in fact two of the exact same thing. So that's gonna make our work a lot easier, right? I just need to make two of the same thing, last step Fischer esterification. So how is this molecule similar or related to this one? Well again, here's that last bonus carbon. So probably I'm gonna to have to take this off and remove that bit. So here's one, two, three, four. Oh. I already have an alcohol in the second position, so that's good news. So maybe this alcohol might be that one. This bit on the end is an oxygen group. If I have an oxygen group on the end, it's possible I can make that into an, an acid. That seems promising. And what about that bit? This bit, I just need to remove that too. Right, so now, now I have a plan and now I can actually get to work. I'm gonna start with Taking off this bit, I don't need it, I don't want it, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get rid of it, right? So, the way that you get rid of primary alcohols is Grignard with water. So, Mg in the presence of ether, that's our good buddy Grignard. Then later we're gonna add water, and that will take this bit off. Okay, now I wanna pull that uh, sucker off. Right? Um, when I take this off, I'm going to add HBr, and HBr potentially might react with this as well. So uh, what, I, what I can do is, if I don't want that, if I'm really worried about that, if I want the reaction to be super clean, I can actually make this into a type of protecting group, right? So if you want to, you can add PCC. That, of course, is your gentle ox. Boop. I will oxidize this. Now I can take this apart, right? With HCl or HBr. This is our ether decomposition. That's the only way that we studied to take apart an ether. So this whole part comes off and you're left with chlorine if we use HCl. Ooh, now this is starting to look more like this, right? Uh, we need to do a couple of things we need to Make that into an oxygen group. So we might need a little hydroxide. Our good buddy SN2. And now, I would say we gotta make that into an acid. Powerful oxidation, that's a dichromate, and H plus. We'll pull that into this, ooh. And now we just need to, how can I reduce a ketone but not reduce an acid, right? You can do that with gentle reduction. If you use sodium borohydride, NaBH4, this can be reduced to this. And we know what our last step is, Fischer esterification with sulfuric acid. All right. Okay, let's try number four again. So 
I just, uh, I just worked it and I did it a long convoluted way and I got to the end and I thought, there's a better way to do this. Um, and um, I didn't show you, for the interest of time, I didn't show you my long convoluted mess. Um, but I do want to actually tell you about it because even me, someone who's been doing this for a long time, uh, sometimes you work on these and you go a long way and you're like, oh, that didn't work or uh, there was an easier way to do that. Um, so to save you a little bit of time, I'm just gonna uh, work through what I think is a slightly shorter, better way for number four. So looking at number four, right? When you first look at this one, this one seems hard. You have this structure, which doesn't look anything like this one, right? So here we have a seven membered ring of all carbon-carbon bonds. That has no ring at all. So we know right away we're gonna have to take this apart, right? Also, when you look over here, this one has a prominent ether, no ether here, right? So we're gonna use those two bits of information to get us started. Let's first start with a little bit of retrosynthesis, right? So if we're thinking about like, what was the last step in assembling this? It's not for sure, but likely it might have involved making this ether. So let's think about that. That meant that one of these was an alcohol and the other one was a halo alkane. We don't really know which one is which. What we'll find is it's easier if this one is the alcohol and this one is the hollow alkane, right? Maybe you had an intuition about that by looking at this, right? Or maybe you tried it the other way around and you're like, actually, if I go back to this, right, it makes it easier this way. But my hypothesis is the last step is Williamson ether synthesis to put this together, all right? Jumping back over here, I know I'm gonna to have to take this apart. I've been avoiding it because it's kind of messy, but now there's no way around it. We only learned one reaction that involves breaking carbon-carbon bonds, and that's alkene oxidation, hot. So we're gonna go in with alkene oxidation. Remember that's potassium permanganate with acid. I'm gonna use capital Greek letter delta to symbolize heat and bzzz, that's gonna cut this bit clean off, right? Not only that, it's gonna oxidize these two on either end. I'm gonna take this top piece and rewrite it below. So this top bit right here is gonna be converted into this thing. This is butadione, two, three, butadione. Oh, and right away I noticed something nice. This is looking a lot like that. Right, so maybe right, we can go from here to here. That looks like powerful, or if you prefer gentle. Either way, we're talking reduction, right? So lithium aluminum hydride or sodium borohydride will get you from here to here. So if we call this step one, maybe we call this step two down here. Let's think about what it, um, what did step one do to the rest of this, right? So I'm gonna leave this intact. I'm just gonna take off this top bit. When I did powerful ox oxidation to this, or sorry, alkene oxidation to this sucker, we got something like this. So one, two, three, four, five carbons in a row with a methyl here and here. It actually looks quite a bit like this one, right? I even have that convenient chlorine here. I just have to take these off. And this is the part that is a little bit tricky because you want to take these off, but you don't want to take that sucker off, okay? So there are a couple of different ways that you can go about that. Um, but here is one way. You could, if this is step one, step two, we'll call this step three, you can do a little uh, powerful reduction with lithium aluminum hydride. That basically takes these acid groups and make them into alcohols. Uh, then if you want to, you can do a little SN2 with HBr, right? SN2 is going to make these into BRs and BRs. Likely it's not gonna affect this, but you might have some substitution here too. You're not gonna get uh, anything else but another BR if this reacts here. Let's say it won't react here. Let's say we're just reacting here and here. Okay, now we wanna get rid of these, but not get rid of that one. 
So we need a way to differentiate primary positions from secondary positions. And we do know a reaction that does that, right? Elimination is one of those reactions that differentiates or discriminates between primary and secondary. So, if we add ourselves a little LDA, remember LDA is the specialized reagent that is really good at eliminating in secondary positions and it has that huge bulky base, so it tends not to substitute. So LDA is going to take this off, and this is the same, but you're going to get the double bond here, here, same difference. Now we can work on taking these off, right? If it's primary and you want to get rid of it completely, our best bet is Grignard. So Grignard with magnesium and ether. Also, and then, if we're getting rid of it, some water. If we follow this step, pow, these go away. Now we're dangerously close to getting back to this, right? Notice in going from here to here, we want to break that double bond. We want to do MEA, but we don't want the Markovnikov product. So our last step, we'll call this number seven over here, is we'll do some anti-MEA. <clears throat> Remember, that works best with HBr and our good buddy benzoyl peroxide. Please uh, write that out if this is some sort of assessment. But benzoyl peroxide will put a bromine right here. And then our last step, step eight, Williamson ether synthesis. That was a tough one. Um, but notice how if you thought about retrosynthesis, and you thought about, well, I have this thing and I have to take it apart and there's only one reaction that does that, right? You did some at the end, you did some at the beginning, and what I did was I kind of tried to meet in the middle. Uh, and this last part was a little bit fiddly, right? So all of these steps here, so for how do I get rid of these acid groups and not somehow get rid of that one, that's the fiddly part. So.